And then we will be transitioning to the next panel, to the frontier of technology and innovation. We're excited to present the next panel discussion, investing in AI strategies for successful implementation. With AI transforming every facet of our lives, from how we work to how we think about solutions, the question isn't whether to invest in AI, but how to do so wisely and effectively. Building further on this subject, let's call on stage our moderator for this session, Mimi Yang, who is the owner of Prospect Recruitment LLC and DBA Patrice and Associates and our panelists. They will be up in just a moment. Thank you guys. Ready to kick us off? Sure. Are we ready? All right, everybody. Well, welcome. Uh, we're excited to discuss investing in AI strategies for implementation. Uh, so today, you've heard different panels speak about AI and how disruptive it's become or will be in the future. <laughs> we don't know where it's going to go. <laughs> so we have a you know we have an esteemed set of panelists over here that I'd like to welcome. Um, I will be your moderator. I'm Mimi Yang. As, uh, as, as she mentioned, I'm the owner of Prospect Recruitment, LLC, doing business as Patrice and Associates. We're a recruitment firm, and we definitely do leverage um, AI to a certain extent. However, we don't rely on it. So um, I'd like to introduce our panelists and also uh, open up a question, actually. I'll let them introduce themselves, and I'll open it up uh, with a single question. So if you could please provide uh, your name, organization, title, as well as how you guys, what's your connection with AI, or provide a fun fact about AI. So we're going to start with, I'm going to go out of order, if that's OK. I'm going to start with Charles, actually. Oh, there you thank go. you. <laughs> um, thank you very much. My name is Charles Hale. I'm the president and founder of Hale Consulting Solutions. Uh, we're a consulting firm that uh, provides um, project management, uh, regulatory compliance, and cybersecurity consulting risk assessments for the, primarily the healthcare industry. Uh, so, and kind of how we've enabled AI within our organization is a, as a full multiplier. This is a very small organization. We've only been around for a couple of years. And so we really used AI to build out a lot of the functionality and do a lot of the things that free me and my team up to focus on running the business. So a lot of the routine tasks, the mundane tasks, the things that can be done, um, you know, made into a process, a repeatable process can be done by AI very uh, easily. Uh, my fun fact for AI is that uh, the term AI was first coined in 1956 at Dartmouth College. Um, and the first AI chatbot named Eliza came out in 1966. So we're all fascinated about all this 2022, 2023. This has been around for a long time. It's just kind of coming back up into the forefront again now. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Charles. All right. How about you, Krishna? My name is uh, Krishna, and I'm from uh, CloudRack. Um, we are, uh, we are a disruptive IT platform that's trying to uh, disrupt IT staffing industry uh, using AI. Mm -hmm. And um, we have been pretty successful in that. Yeah. I think uh, we are going to address about uh, $550 billion industry. And uh, looking forward for interesting conversation and perspectives from everybody here. Excellent. Thank you, Krishna. All right. And we have Bibakar here. Bibakar, would you like to answer? Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm Bibakar Pandey. I'm the CEO of, of a private equity backed uh, company that focuses on building customer experience solutions uh, for our clients, leveraging data insights and AI. Uh, you know, AI, uh, as Charles was mentioning, has always been part of our lives for so long, right? You know, I mean, uh, was it not in 2000 when Steven Spielberg uh, came out of his movie, first movie uh, around AI? But yeah, I mean, it's become a little more hot these days because everyone, every boardroom is talking about artificial intelligence and uh, what needs to be done in that space. Uh, from a customer experience perspective, what we have seen is that uh, you can actually leverage AI as a technology, more, uh, you know, building it towards a more of a holistic solution around every touch point of a customer journey. And that's where technologies like AI and integrated uh, 
data systems really help us to build a more human-centric designs for our clients, uh, especially in the customer experience space. Now, uh, talking about a fun fact about, uh, uh, before I get to the fun fact, I also would briefly talk about the company. So uh, we, we typically have a bunch of consultants. We have, uh, over a period of time, we have, we have this novel idea of going to tier three cities and hiring uh, the top tier students from these colleges where typically they won't get you know, uh, opportunities to work in uh, you know, large uh, five, Fortune 500 customers. As, as consultants, and we have this incubation period of uh, 20 weeks where the students come in and go through a, a comprehensive courses on AI and uh, customer experience to build a unified uh, consulting experience for them as they grow. Now, coming back to the fun point, uh, fun fact, uh, I don't know how many of you have used AI to really create a digital twin of yourself. I mean, you look so, I, mean, I look so good in that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the picture. I saw yeah. the picture in the pamphlet. But the problem is that none of my family or friends agrees that that's me. So that's my fun fact, I would say. That's wonderful. All right, Pallavi, you're next. Hi, everybody. I'm Pallavi Agarwal, CEO and founder of Candor Consult. We are a global Salesforce consulting partner, as well as focusing on program management. The way we incorporate AI is, given, given that we are consulting partners and Salesforce CRM is disrupting AI right now in the industry, we really have to stay on top of it to help our customers figure out how they're going to incorporate AI into their organizations for efficiencies. To do that, we also have to be a lead example of that. So our, t our team right now, like yourself, is using AI technology to leverage creating using it for tasks that can create efficiencies, like writing emails, posts, thinking through for creativity reasons, like when you have a roadblock, sometimes asking AI for those, and leveraging some of those tools that are out there, not just from chat GPT perspective, but other AI tools. For, for us, we do a lot of implementation work, so writing user stories, how can we expedite that by loading our recordings of the meetings and then having AI write those user stories for us, identify those personas, and tools like that, as well as coming up with coding solutions. How can we use prompting? And Salesforce is doing a lot of that already today. So we're using Salesforce technology, leveraging it, becoming the market experts so we can then further assist our customers around the globe. Thank you, Pallavi. All right. And for me, uh, we do leverage AI. We don't rely on it within our recruitment firm. Um, we actually do rely, part of, part of what makes us, I think, special uh, with Patrice and Associates is that we do actually continue that warm touch, right? We don't blast people via email. We don't do robocalls. We actually pick up the phone and we call people. Um, and how we identify the people is by first understanding what those requirements are from the business. It's not really just Oh, hey, they need to know how to, how to you know, run this application. They need to know how to use this application. They need to know how to program this application or enhance it. That, that's one factor, right? You need to understand what the culture is like within the company. Will this person fit within that culture? AI sometimes is not going to be able to determine that. AI will identify those data sets that are out there within the resumes that are out there today. And then they're going to identify that. I believe there was a gentleman in the previous panel who had mentioned that it does depend on the algorithm. And I was speaking to one of the attendees here about this, right? It really does depend on who is developing that algorithm. So for the folks who are applying for jobs and you're, you feel like you're not getting anywhere, I'm like, that, that's, that's part of it, right? So how do we kind of get beyond that? And that's going to be part of that discussion today. So thank you, everybody, for your answers. So we're going to get a little more deep into this, and then you know, I'll signal you if we're going to kind of need to wrap it up a little bit. But, <laughs> uh, but the next question is, right, uh, we all know everybody has varying levels of understanding of what AI is, right? Um, we have small businesses, people who just want to start up. They're like, I know that there's something out there for me. I know that I can make an impact. Small, medium, large size, large size businesses that might have a little more capital to be able to play around and invest in it a little bit more. So what I'd like to ask our panel, and I'll start with Bibakar, what considerations should be prioritized when developing and deploying AI systems? And how can we ensure responsible AI governance? You see, uh, every boardroom, as I said, has been talking about AI. 
you know, I mean, there is a genuine uh, acknowledgement of the fact that AI is no splash in the pan. It's going to be here for, it's, it's the next S curve, as they call it, right? You know, as the next in industrial evolution or evolution that they call it. And uh, it's going to stay here. But at the same time, uh, you know, a lot of people have been using AI as a tool that can help solve their immediate problem and not really looking at AI holistically. Right? Every, everyone, if we go to talk to any CXO, they say, you know what, we are moving from digital first to AI first. You know, if you ask them what does that mean, I, I'm, I can guarantee you that 90% of the people will not be able to explain that more holistically. <laughs> right? Because for them, solving a small problem through leveraging some kind of AI solution is their AI first strategy. AI first strategy, actually, to me, it means that you have to look at your problem statement more holistically. As an organization, you have to think about your three Ps, right? You know, the problems or the processes that you have within your organization, your people, essentially, and your principles. You know, like, you know, we, we'll talk about ethics and other things during the course, but I think these three things are really, really important for any organization to look for a more holistic solution. I'll give you an example like, uh, uh, you know, I mean, 65% of the marketing organization across the world. They use AI in some shape and form. And they've been using AI for the past five years, you know, 65%. Now, that seems a pretty huge number of adoption. But at the same time, these are used for these solving these minute problems. And they don't look at AI to really create a holistic marketing strategy for themselves. And this is where the difference will come in, right? And this is where organization who can really build and think about that more holistically is going to be key. And regarding your question around governance, I think this is where the ethics and the, you know, the principles around the governance, the governance will come into play because uh, you have to establish a much uh, robust form of government. Govern Any new innovation that comes in has a downside effect of it. When internet came in, it was called the information highway, right? You know, but there was a lot of downside of effect of that. Similarly, here, there's going to be a lot of downside effect. I think it's important to uh, have uh, tighter governance across the board. Ideally, they should come from governments and stuff, but knowing the fact that 60% of the countries this year is going for an election, so there's not going to be a robust governance around uh, AI from governments across the world. So every organization has to create their own little governance that can enable a more successful AI uh, implementation. That's all I'm saying. I love that response. I, I like the fact that you went with, because working in strategy, right, you typically think of things as people, process, technology. You called out people, process, principles. And I think that that's extremely important, right? This is not just technology that we're talking about. So, all right, thank you. Lavi, would you like to answer next? Yeah, I'll piggyback a little bit on that, because with us, uh, we're working with a lot of tech companies out there that are looking to create efficiencies using AI. and. You know, I love our customers and the industry because every time we talk about a new buzzword, every, every executive is like, we need it. We want it now, right? And the strategies, the playbook is never, there's no roadmap. They're discussing like, I just want AI plugged in today. And there really needs to be a roadmap planning around it, right? We need to think about, as Vibhakar mentioned, we need to talk about governance. What are the rules of engagement? for your organization that are gonna be important to be risk averse to a certain degree. How much risk tolerance are you willing to have? What are your security protocols? For the government sector, they're not gonna adopt AI anytime soon. They're gonna wait till the technology is more mature, more tested and true, because security, trust, hallucinations, there's so much that we have to get through in the next couple of years to really adopt AI the right way for those agencies. Now then we have in our tech industry where we have our early adopters. They are more willing to take certain risks but still stay within the confines of what their organization parameters are. So really having those building blocks of first figuring out what are your rules in the playground that you wanna play within. Then how are you gonna educate, train, and monitor that? And then really thinking through how to implement that AI. Are you gonna pilot it? with a few groups, get people to really believe in it, and then launch it across? Is it gonna be a free-for-all that, hey, anyone can use AI in our organization within these parameters, and then how are you gonna monitor it? 
So there's a lot of structure we need to put in place in a very unstructured playground right now. Yeah. Charles. Um, I'm going to get a little bit tactical to follow up on your strategic comments. And coming from a project management background, it's really doing a business case of how you want to use AI and does it make sense. AI is not the end-all, be-all solution to everything. Um, my, my digital innovation director is in the audience and, and uh, she gets so frustrated with me because I'll spend 16 hours solving a problem that would take me just one hour to do. Um, so, because I enjoy playing. Um, that's not a good ROI. <laughs> so it's really looking at what are the pain points within our organization and what are the AIs at solution? And AI means many, many different things. We talk about large language models. We talk about generative AI. We talk about mid-journey and all this stuff. It's really using the right tool for the right job. Um, so you have to figure out what AI fits this pain point. And you know, they're not all created equal. You know, uh, the perplexity and chat GDP and Genesis are not the same thing. They give different results. They have different strengths. So it's really educating yourself. Um, and then the final point, and, and you spoke on this too, is regulations. We don't have a lot of regulations right now, but they're coming. We, we've seen some stuff come out in California. We've seen some stuff come out in Europe. So it's being aware of the evolving you know, regulations in this thing and making sure that you're aligned with the direction that things are going. Because nothing's worse than to build, spend millions of dollars building something amazing, and then, oh, we can't use it because they just passed a law saying it's illegal which tends to be a risk, right, yeah, for any company, this. and that can be an expensive risk. So I would love to hear Krishna's perspective. Yeah, I think um, um, I look at AI from a perspective of uh, alternative for human intelligence, mm -hmm. like in terms of what are the things that I am missing within my, my abilities and knowledge and the data that I have mm -hmm. um, that AI can you know, give as an additional input, right? So I'm, I'm only um, limited to the knowledge that I have. I'm only limited to the tools that I have, mm -hmm. the resources that I have. But I expect AI to probably pull, you know, the data from every possible source and assimilate and consolidate and give that intelligence for me. But then I, I take that judgment call. So that's, that's my, my, my checkpoint. Excellent. Uh, number two, I also use AI from market research perspective. I need to launch uh, a product. What's the best market for me to have maximum sales? Um, and what is the most appropriate price that I can position this product? Nice. Which is the demogra demographic segment that I need to target? Yeah. Um, I would use AI for something like that. And I would also use AI to mitigate any possible risks that I, I, I could not anticipate. Um, again, I use my judgment call to decide whether I would act upon it or not. Absolutely. Right? And, and I think AI can replace some rudimentary or repetitive tasks mm -hmm. that I think just can make things more efficient. I wouldn't look at it as replacement to human jobs, but I would use it um, not to just repeat um, you know, to make me more efficient, right? Um, and, uh, and I also use from decision-making perspective, right? What are the odds of my investment against this particular stock mm -hmm. going up? Mm -hmm. What are the odds of my betting on this option right. succeeds, right? Mm -hmm. um, when is the right time for me to sell? When is the right time for me to buy? How do I predict? There are innumerable number of variables. How do, how do I humanly calculate those? I cannot. Um, no matter, I may have access to many different softwares, um, many different uh, technical analytical tools, functional analytical tools, but it's almost impossible for me to time the market, right? But if I can get as close as possible, I would use that. Um, I think these are some of the high-level ways that I think um, I would implement AI. Um, but again, it, it depends on your ability to ask the right questions, right? Yes. Um, you, need to, you need to be in, in that position where you are um, 
challenging AI to get you answers that you would probably uh, may not be able to figure out by yourself. Agreed. Thank you for that, Krishna. Thank you. Um, I would like to comment on something that you commented on, right, in terms of automation, AI, and I, I totally very much appreciate your perspective on there. Um, AI has been challenging in terms of, it's been challenging the market in terms of jobs, right? I mean, people have lost their jobs. People may continue to, right, because, and it may not necessarily be the AI aspect. It could be just the automation aspect of it, right? Um, which kind of leads us to what the next question would be. So can AI achieve human level intelligence? And if so, what are the implications for future work and society, right? And I'd like to start with Pallavi on this one. Yeah, um, so you mentioned AI has been around for a long time. I believe the same thing. We're just talking about different levels of AI, mm -hmm. right? And different parts of the world, like America's actually, we were talking about this earlier, different parts of the world are using AI at a higher percentage than US and even Europe. Mm -hmm. And I think it can, at some point, get close to the human level. But there, again, will need to be guardrails. Like, you know, why are people today scared of AI and don't trust AI? Because we have too many Hollywood movies out there where robots take over the world. Right? No, I, and these are conversations that is we're part having. Of it. Absolutely. We're I robot. having these conversations. I so there's that, <laughs> there's this fear that if they do become human like, yeah. how is there going to be control and what's going to happen to the human population? Right. So there's an aspect of yes, they will have more and more. But remember, it's all, they're feeding off of data and adapting with the language models off of that data. So it's also about what kind of data are we putting in there? Are we also teaching our AI capabilities to have compassion and empathy? Are we teaching all of the human aspects? Yes, they can have certain levels of human aspects, but until we take a responsibility to also teach them the emotional intelligence, I don't think we can say they're human yet. Right. That's great feedback, Flavi. Thank you. Krishna. Um, I think um, AI can... Um, uh, compete with human beings at an intelligence level, but not at a conscious level. Mm -hmm. Human beings have consciousness. Um, we as humans have awareness, and then we also have intuitive abilities. Yes. Um, I, I, I cannot imagine AI to have those intuitive abilities. Mm -hmm. um, it, I don't think it can go beyond reason. It needs reasoning, right? Um, but at the same time, um, there is this generative part, right? Um, at a point, it will, it will generate, its, generate its own intelligence and take that next move. If you are playing chess, mm -hmm. it can predict your next move. Yes. Um, it can probably also predict your next to next move, right? Um, but there is this judgment call, right? In real life, human beings have judgment what's right, what's wrong. Um, that part, um, it cannot. But then it will act upon what you programmed for. So even if it means not good, not good ideas, right? Some of the, you know, how you program it to, so that's what it does, right? Um, but I think the biggest difference is um, it, doesn't, it, it, doesn't ha it doesn't bring um, your, your consciousness, it doesn't bring your mind, it doesn't bring your intuitive abilities, it also doesn't bring um, any of your right brain functions. Got it. Okay. Thank you very much, Krishna. Charles? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm completely aligned. I, I've, depending on who you go with, there's 18 different types of human intelligence now, or, or the numbers vary depending on who's doing the survey, but, you know, <laughs> and some of them, AI already, AI has a way better memory than I have. I'll admit it. Um, my concern is not so much whether AI is going to develop human-like intelligence, but that the concern is we have to maintain our human level of intelligence. Right. Um, I lived in Southern California. We had this horrible device called a Thomas Guide. It's like this 500-page map of how to get around <laughs> in Los Angeles. Yes. <laughs> and, and I could use it backwards and forwards, no problem at all. I now, because of Google Maps, can barely read a map. You know, it, it, it's just, you know, and there are other things that you become dependent upon these technologies 
And so my, my map reading intelligence has gone down. You know, Google's got a higher map reading intelligence than I do. Um, so I think that's something that we have to be aware of is use this as an opportunity to elevate ourselves to higher levels of intelligence, not to, oh, well, the computer will take care of that. Also, I have one more point. I think uh, memorization also um, uh, is important, right? You know, we used to memorize things. Yes. Um, <laughs> So that's not going to be any more cool. You don't need to memorize anything. <laughs> so what we are teaching kids uh, um, is is not good. So they don't no longer need to memorize anything. They don't they they no longer need to do repetitive tasks. So how do you learn? How how do you how do you learn to be disciplined? How do you learn the work ethic? How do you learn to be uh, hardworking? Mm -hmm. So anything can be possible in an easy way, right? So what is the way which is, is right? What is the way which is not right? I so um, why do you need to go to school for four years? Why do you need to do undergrad for four years, right? AI passed medical exam, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, medical board exam. Right. So what difference are you bringing to the table as a doctor? So it's, these are difficult questions. Um, but at the same time, um, I think uh, governors, uh, you know, regulation, um, uh, morality, um, there's no place called morality for that. But we have to bring that into the place, right? Uh, how do you bring morality? How do you bring righteousness? How do you bring um, values, mm -hmm. right? That, that, so, uh, so that's a big thing um, that I think um, is very important, I think, uh, at a governance level. But uh, I see a lot of positives. But you know, you just need to use that as efficient tool to achieve your goals very fast. Right. You know. Right. So that that's how I look at it. So you know, I have a goal. I need to achieve that goal right now. It may take one year, but with that, probably I can do it in three months. Thank you, Krishna. Yeah. And kind of along those lines as well, I, I think it's an opportunity, like I said, to elevate so my team doesn't have to spend their time doing things that don't require any down, they just, you know, wrote. They're now able to do things. And the example that comes to mind is, you know, when, when Lotus 1, 2, 3 and Excel came out, everybody oh. thought, that's the end of accounting. We don't need accountants anymore. <laughs> we still have accountants. <laughs> We do, and they use Lotus One Two. Well, they don't, probably don't use Lotus One Two Three, <laughs> but they use Excel. Uh, they use QuickBooks. <laughs> they quick, use QuickBooks. I'm, I'm dating myself, um, but uh, and they are doing the higher level things, and they use Excel to allow them to spend more time at a higher level. And, and I think that that is the the bright light um, that comes with it. Thank you, Charles, and you, Bibakar. You know, I have a slightly different perspective to this. Uh, I'll tell you. Uh, when computers came in uh, early days, right, there was a lot of fear of computers going to take away jobs, and it did take away a lot of jobs, right? But it also created a whole lot of new jobs, right? So to your point, I think uh, jobs are going to go away. Let's be prepared for that, right? But at the same time, new jobs are going to come up, Correct. and I think our it's about, it's not so much about AI as it's about human intelligence. I think human intelligence has to evolve and continue to evolve to take advantage of what is right in front of us, right? This is a, a phase of another industrial ev revolution, evolution, whatever you call it. And any industrial evolution takes almost 10 to 15 years for general adoption. The thing with AI is that it has shortened the cycle by almost five years. You know, we started to talk about it in 2022, and we are expecting a general purpose AI across the board by 2026. So we are already shortening the cycle because of the technology and everything that comes along with it. So we have to be prepared for that. We cannot avoid it, right? We cannot live in our you know, glass frame and say that, oh, AI is there, but humans are more important. They are important, but at the same time, the rudimentary jobs has to go. I mean, I was reading an email just now came from my, one of my neighborhood pizza shop. They said that they're going to close on Tuesdays because they have shortage of labor. And this is happening all over the place, right? After COVID, people doing these rudimentary jobs are getting you know, smaller and smaller. So why not that job should be done by an automation tool that's generated by AI? It's beneficial for everyone, right? You need to look at leveraging AI to evolve and actually get the human intelligence at a higher level. 
it doesn't mean that AI is going to take away human intelligence. Remember, it's humans who designed AI. So I think we need to leverage this like we leverage computers. We have to leverage AI to really evolve ourselves to the next level of, you know, intelligence. That's yeah, I will add to that. I completely agree. Like AI will take away certain jobs, but it's also creating so many. In our industry, we're very focused in the Salesforce realm. Salesforce, we've already introduced prompt, prompting, um, a few other things, but now we're talking about new positions called prompt engineers. So those who are in the market right now that may not have had jobs before can train up and they'll be the leaders in that segment because that job didn't exist before. So as we are taking jobs away, we are also putting Maybe them right jobs. back into the market with newer jobs, newer technologies where you do have to elevate and learn and really push yourself and challenge yourself. We're doing it every day. Like, I've been doing software implementation for a couple of decades now. And even when cloud came out, I was young in my career and I thought I was going to be a dinosaur <laughs> if I didn't learn cloud soon <laughs> because I was like, I am really young and this cloud thing is coming about. And now pretty much everyone uses cloud. That's how AI is going to be. So we all need to, at some baseline level, start experimenting with it and build knowledge base around it to elevate ourselves as well. I'd like to add to that as well. I heard everything. Everybody had wonderful points here, right? We talked about discipline. We talked about the jobs leaving and the jobs coming, right? But then there's this area, right? The world doesn't stop for AI to come. Um, we've got folks that are unemployed. What can you do while you're unemployed in the meantime? My recommendation would be look into AI, to be honest with you, right? Because AI is gonna pop up in every single sector if it has not already been looked at, whether it's HR, recruitment, right? You've got finances, right? What are Indeed. those insights within all your finances? I'm like, you've got data populations. That was just shown by one of our keynote speakers and how quickly you can gain insights from all of those pieces. So the recommendation, in my opinion, as a franchisee and as a recruiter and seeing where the market is going and seeing where the disparities are, is to honestly train up. Like, just get an understanding of what ChatGPT is. Ask a question. That's what a prompt is. It's just a basic question. But then you get more complex prompts when you go into things like mid-journey. You can create, oh my god, these beautiful images, like the twin of Bibicar. <laughs> and like, you can create the exact version. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can turn me into Tom Cruise if you yeah. wanted to. So, um, but anyway, but the prompts is a perfect example of a new job that's going to be created out of this. And there's going to be different prompts and different and it's almost like an art in itself to yeah. create yeah. that. So thank you everybody for that insight. I really, really appreciate it. I know we're short on time, but the last question that I have is how do you envision AI industries in the next decade and what are the potential societal impacts? We already talked a little bit about jobs. Um, what are the other societal impacts that you guys see? You know, Deepak, I, I, I'll, I'll start with myself <laughs> yes, uh, since I'm closest to you. So yes. uh, I think, uh, as you're seeing, AI is definitely taking over some of the rudimentary work. And the most impacted industry, I hope, sooner than later, is going to be industries like retail, you know, uh, 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 medical, and training specifically, because there's a lot of things that uh, can be done. As you rightly said, why do we need like four years to do a graduation yeah. when you have AI doing like in, yeah. in one day, right? You know? mm -hmm. So you need to leverage some of that technology uh, specifically in the training industry where a lot of knowledge has been lost, you know, through boomers, right? You know, if you look at it, underwriting processes, complex underwriting processes, you know, that was never documented. It went into the head and it was went with those boomers all out, right? So you need to start, already industries like insurance, financial services are looking at how do we really use AI to not really rebuild, rebuild that knowledge, but automate that some of, some of those things, right? And that's going to continue to happen. So I think it's important to uh, look at uh, AI from that lens in specific industry solving a problem. As I said in the beginning, it's not so much about uh, like AI as a technology, but leveraging AI to solve a problem or create an opportunity in your business to drive a better outcome. I think that's the way the industry should be evolving. Yeah. Obviously, to reach there, there's going to be these pointed, small changes, yeah. using it as a tool, but I think it's important to take it okay. Also, bigger I think it's going to bring extreme level of transparency. Yes. It'll eliminate a lot of bureaucracy in the corporate system. Yes. 
So if you want to have access to any information, any data, uh, you know, any records, accounting records, or uh, projections, or, or any research, it's available. Um, you know, so that gives a um, lot of advantage. Um, it will also eliminate people who are lazy. It will eliminate people who are trying to make them so dependent at work. So I need some information. I need to write 10 emails to get that information for you, right? right. Um, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So that means organization is going to be more efficient. Everybody has to, they will become efficient or they will be out of the system. Of so absolutely. that's what is going to happen. So there is, um, there is too much transparency, too, uh, too much speed. Efficiency. There is a lot of speed, speed of execution. Right. Right. You can track a shipment. You can track, um, uh, you know, a truck. You can track everything. Right. There is no nothing hidden. Right. So you um, you want to talk to your doctor. You know, there's there's so much transparency that can be created, which is not there right now. Right. So you can do predictive modeling. Uh, what's going to happen to your 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 numbers, your lab cop reports? Right. If this is my numbers. If I don't change anything, how, how would it look like in the next five years? Right. I can see that right now. Exactly. I, there's no guesswork, right? I don't need right. to do any kind of a guesswork. And somebody, somebody need not give some opinion. Mm -hmm. I can look at that from a fact-based data and change my habits. Agreed. These Absolutely. are such very, very positive things. It gives right? you all like, the insights. For example, look at real estate industry. I won't, I'm not foreseeing so much, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, um, realtors adding value um, and then so many commissions losing <laughs> between the middlemen, right? That industry is going to get affected. Will our houses it's, it's, go down it's in already price? Started. <laughs> I hope so. I hope Hopefully so. Hopefully we can afford houses. <laughs> it, uh, you know, but I, I will add that as we're talking about these things, another thing is AI as an industry is only going to boom, right? Yeah. Yeah. We have our nonprofit customers even looking at AIs now. Yeah. We have small businesses in different industries, every, everyone, like 67% of IT leaders are making AI a priority in their roadmap within the next 18 months. So it's that important. So it's definitely gonna be a huge disruptor in the industry. I think there's, you're gonna see a lot of new companies coming out, a lot of new ideas being generated of how AI can be used and built and utilized, and not just from a corporate perspective, but also from a social reform perspective, right? How can we capture data in remote places in a way and help these villages? Like we have nonprofits that build bridges. Mm -hmm. They're looking at AI capabilities right now and how to build bridges in remote African countries to provide accessibility to villagers for food, water, medicine. So AI is not just in corporate, it's going to be everywhere. Absolutely, Pallavi. Charles. I think one of the most disruptive aspects of AI that, that is just beginning to surface now is that, someone mentioned it earlier today, data is the new oil. Yeah. And AI provides access to data. And this is a commodity that people, I work in the healthcare industry, people really, really, I mean, there's privacy and security aspects of it, but there's large companies that we control, this is our data, and you will not touch it. Yes. yes. And, and that's been a, a huge problem in the healthcare industry because, well, I'm his doctor and I would like to have that data about him. <laughs> <laughs> um, and AI is kind of opening up those doors. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you've got the New York Times suing open source AI. You've got lots yeah. of people are saying, data is our life. This is all we've got. And now you're going to make it available to everyone? <laughs> It's going to be very disruptive. Absolutely. Thank you for that. I know we are short in time. I just want to throw out on my perspective, um, this may not be in the next five or ten years, but, <laughs> you know, when I think of AI, I'm like, are we going to turn into WALL-E <laughs> from Disney, right? Because, like, honestly, where I see AI, maybe not in the next ten years, but what, are, what I would really love to see, if we're able to get there, get through the bias, get through... Um, you know, truly, the bias actually is really the key really part. Key. Very right? important. I mean, that, that's the key part. If we're able to overcome that and truly implement what we want, and it really serves a human, and it shows that transparency, AI will be a commodity at some point. Hopefully, is what Should I'm be. hoping. Can I? Can I it'll, it'll, yeah, tell please. You a, uh, so I was at a panel last year talking about AI, and it was so funny because the the women at the table versus the men, we were talking about how do you talk to AI. 
the women were like, we always say thank you. And the men were like, why? It's a robot. <laughs> and we're like, because we wanted to have manners, right? And that's all, that was talking about bias and yeah. removing some of that bias because tech industry is not, it's not been women friendly for decades. Who's built that data and the code? The men. So as women are interjecting, we're also starting to remove some of that bias. But I just found it funny because all the women are like, I always say thank you and hello. And I say please. Right, well, please and thank please, you and hello. Please blah, blah. <laughs> so, like, seriously, how many of you say please, thank you, and hello when you're talking to your box? Mm -hmm. yeah. There you yeah. go. We got some. Mostly of the women. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not one side or the other. So, but perhaps but just that's bias. That <laughs> that's bias. Yeah, there you and go. So. Yeah. My rationale's a little different. When it takes over the world, I want it to think kindly of me. <laughs> so. yeah. oh, I would say the same thing. I say right. please, gotta thank you. Manners. For future AI karma. There you go. All right. Um, I know that we're running, uh, running out of time. Do we have a little bit of time for Q&A, if anybody has any? We can do one or two quick questions. We're okay. over time currently. Does anybody have any questions? Sure. You know, uh, my name is Alan Krishnan from Washington, D.C. And all along, everywhere, and specifically, Krishna, you presented some of the negatives. And Pallavi, you referred to building Africa, roads in Africa. And I want to ask you a question. When we say thank you and sorry, it's not to make you feel better. It improves me as an individual. And when you don't say that, you regress. Are you surprised, thanks to the smartphone, which makes me dumber, <laughs> and social media, which takes away societal relationships, are we growing teenagers and young people are having relationship challenges to build one? And there is so much threat to our society because of AI. Since there's less capability. AI is a piece of crap. It's just an old wine in a new bottle. When we had Excel first and it did the math, that's AI. When spell check came up, I, why should I learn alphabets? There's a spell check which corrects everything. And that is what causes regression. And by the way, I know you're all brilliant human beings who are here. How many of you remember you had your ancestors had tails? What happened to the tails? Why have they disappeared? Because you stopped using them. In the last four years, I'm living closely with a good friend of mine who's having ALS, whose muscles are degenerating. Now she's in such terrible shape, accelerated because her daughter-in-law got her a wheelchair and she stopped walking. Muscles which are already going bad went bad faster. So what do you think the whole industry of AI can do to prevent the brains of our children and grandchildren getting to the point that they don't need any brains any longer? Thank you. I'll take the first stab at that. Um, personally, as a tutor and as a mentor of children, and you know, before I had my own little one, I used to tutor kids a lot. And I usually actually started at seventh grade because their brains were developed to a certain point cognitively to be able to absorb certain types of information and process it to a certain extent. So I, was, I found it as like, a, as, like a, as a mentor and a tutor. I was like, okay, these kids will be easier to, <laughs> to tutor versus like the little ones. I'm like, I don't have to teach them how to read. I'm like, thank goodness. <laughs> but what I would say is that AI isn't everything. We can't forget about the values in our own family um, in society, granted, yes, there are things that come at us. There are things that are always in front of us visually that kind of the next shiny thing, right? But what we can't do is forget about what our values were at home, for instance, personally. Um, I'm, I'm South Korean, like my family's South Korean. I was born and raised in New York, but you know, <laughs> like, you know I'm, I'm South Korean. So um, I have a 17 year old who's not my biological son, but he's my son. One of the things, one of the traditions that we carry forward is we say before dinner, chan makesunida. That is your way of saying bon appetit, eat well. And after you eat, you say chan magasunida, which means thank you. It's like essentially thank you for the food, right? It's showing the appreciation, the gratefulness that you have for what's presented in front of you. We need to instill that. AI is not everything. If you need to learn what that is, if you don't know what it is, then ask AI, how do I, <laughs> how do I bring these cultures back? How do I bring these stories back? But those stories actually still reside within my family. We still have folk tales that I read since I was a kid in English and in Korean on one side that I read to my kid, you know what I'm saying? So like, we try to carry that forward. I would have to, I would have to say that in that sector, you know, unless you need to be educated in that area, use AI. But please continue those values, those, those, sharing those, the culture, sharing what you do within your own family, within another family. That was the panel that was here before that. You got to uphold those. Yeah. 
that's just my two cents. Yeah, and yeah. I, I know we're out of, out of time, but along those same lines too, and kind of what we talked about, is as leaders and as business leaders, upping the challenge for our team. So we, we saw a demo earlier where the guy created a report, the AI just created the report. So don't ask your team to create reports. They can use AI for that. Ask them to interpret the reports, to do something with those reports, because use that's how we're going to continue to expand. Use your brain. You, yeah. yeah, to, to yeah. elevate your people beyond that. Yeah. I know we're out of time, but those of you who didn't get to ask questions, we'll just stand on the side there for a little bit while the other panel gets ready. So if you want to talk to us, we'll be on, over there. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Really Thank you. appreciate your Thank you.